Greetings everyone, it's QB Dead by Daylight Veteran, 4 years of constantly playing on console, some PC experience as well, especially in terms of some PDB testing, but uh, mostly console, and uh, today I would like to introduce you to my tier list, we're going to have some conversations about the killers, how did they rank up, their place in the game, etc, etc, we're going to assume this tier list is a little bit mixed, like a console and PC, but mostly console. And yeah, if you do have something to say, something to agree or uh, to argue, just let me know in the comments. And uh, before we get into it, let me tell you about the uh, criteria that I got for the list. So we're going to assume that a person that plays for the killer is an experienced one, he plays above average. His like ability to push the killer to the max is high. He knows what to do, how to react in that particular situation. So he basically is an experienced person that is uh, very good in the game. He's not the best, but he's definitely very good for that particular killer. We're going to uh, have a mix of solo survivors and survivors with friends that have like the advantages of the voice chat. For example, a group of two and two solos, two groups of two, a group of three and a solo, a group of four, etc, etc. We're going to take into the consideration all of the maps. Uh, we're going to take uh, into the consideration all the add-ons, including the add on less killers but uh we're mostly going to consider and focus on the common add-ons the ones that you can basically encounter any given game so you don't often see a killer with the red add-ons or the purple ones you don't often see a killer without add-ons at all so uh you know some Iridescent add-ons can uh, push the killer up in a tier list a little bit. Some are not, but uh, we're going to focus on the common add-ons like brown, green, yellow. But we're still taking some other add-ons into the consideration. And uh, the criteria is to get three or four kills, doesn't matter, three or four, consistently at any given night. Against solos, against survival friends, against high MMR, low MMR, new players, doesn't matter. Three kills or four kills consistently. So that's it for the criteria. And uh, before we go on, I would like to say that you can lose. You can actually be beaten up very badly with S tier killers. You can win consistently with D tier killers. But it all comes down that. Uh, D tier killers have more weaknesses and they tend to suffer a lot more from the high MMR players, from a group of four players that know what to do, that are really good in the game, that are great in the game, and uh, they will face a lot more problems than the S tier killers. Uh, I'm not saying D tier killers are bad, but they do have more flaws and weaknesses. And uh, they definitely need a buff. B tier is the killers, like other killers that uh, can uh, facilitate the game. Uh, that can be uh, very, very deadly in most of the scenarios, in most of the maps that are basically really good and balanced. They can be weak sometimes, like pretty weak. They can be very strong, just basically balanced, normal killers. A tier killers are the ones that are really strong and have some minor weaknesses here and there, but will be comfortable for playing almost at any given night. With S tier killers being the killers that can give you consistent wins no matter what, basically all the time. It still depends on the survivors, on your mood on the map, etc, etc. But they are the most consistent in winning against everybody. 
with that being said let's start with the d tier and let's start with uh, my guy michael myers so he's definitely at the bottom of the list at the bottom of the d tier uh let's talk about his power so he stalks people he gets his power up and he actually becomes very uh, dangerous he actually has an insta down in his tier 3 he waltz faster he has an increased lunge that's that's pretty decent but uh he can still be loopable uh is pretty easily loopable and uh, the problem I do have is first you need to get out of the tier one as soon as possible because you have a shorter lunge you have a slow movement speed you barely move faster than the survivors and it's just a pain in the ass to actually hurt someone in tier one before you get to the tier two you have to spend a considerable amount of time stalking someone and that's not very good even against an average survivors you'll probably lose a gen or two so slow down perks is a must in tier 3 he is still loopable so you need some perks that can help you in the chase bamboozle brutal strength for example sloppy butcher maybe uh to slow down the game a, a bit more like universal perk but uh He's still not OP in his power. No, uh, he's pretty easy loopable. You need to take, like, to spend a lot of time getting to the tier two. And in tier two, you're basically a normal killer without anything normal movement speed, normal lunge, no power at all. And you still have to stalk. Stalking is another huge weakness of Michael Myers. Uh, Field of view is terrible. The range of stalking is not very good. You have to be in people's faces most of the time. You can easily avoid being stalked by Michael hiding somewhere or crouching somewhere. So his not only his tier one is bad and you need some time to get out of it, but his stalking is bad too. And uh in tier two is just a normal killer without any power so uh yeah definitely needs a buff definitely needs something maybe a tier three uh, like upgrade maybe get like bamboozle walling speed and brutal strength pallet breaking speed in his tier three or something i'm not sure but uh he's slow his stalking is bad. His tier 2, in which you're going to spend most of the time, is just a normal killer. And that's basically it. He does have some good add-ons, like the purple and the red ones. But uh, you're not going to see Myers with a lot like running these add-ons most of the time. So yeah, he's a bottom D tier for me. Next one is a Trickster. This guy moves at 110% speed, so he's below average in terms of speed. He's not very mobile, he lacks uh, map control, he lacks all of these things. And uh, his chase power, which are the knives that he can throw. I mean, it's not hard to throw a knife, but you have to throw eight knives to injure or down a person. He is very hard to uh, be good at at some loops at some indoor maps it's very it's actually very hard to land all of the eight shots against average or above average survivor and uh you have a short period of time in which you do need to land eight knives when the period passes you have to land eight knives again. His movement speed is terrible. His map control control is terrible. Like, not the movement speed, but mobility in general. 
And his chase power, I'll give it a 4 out of 10. It's pretty weak. And he doesn't have anything except for his chase power. So yeah, uh, he stands in a D tier for me. Next up on the list is Legion. So yeah, Legion in his power, he can run faster, he can walk through the windows fast, he can walk through the pallets, he can injure people, and they actually need to mend, uh, which takes some time, like 6-8 seconds, but uh, the problem with him is that he cannot down people in his power, so he basically use his power for a chase, and it's actually pretty good but just to injure them you cannot down people in your power and you have some cooldown when your power ends which will help people to gain more distance and that's pretty bad uh, on some occasions when you run like sloppy butcher and thanatophobia if you find three survivors working on the gen you injure three of them and it will take some time for them to actually heal. But it's a rare occasion. Most of the time you go to a person, get his power, injure a person. He gets some distance. Then you have a cooldown. The person gets more distance. And then you're just an M1 killer that can get looped all of the time. So his power is not useless, but it's very, very weak. And he doesn't have anything else. But at least he has a 150 movement speed, but that's, that's basically nothing. So, uh, yeah, he's in a dear tier for me. Next up is the pig. I do have a lot of issues with her. And uh, I used to play her a lot uh, at the start of the game. So, uh, she does have some kind of stealth when she crouches, no red chain and uh, no terror radius. But if we compare her to the other stealth killers, her movement speed is so bad when she crouches. It's so slow, it's actually 92%. You do not need to crouch actually, cause it's just too slow. And some perks like spine chill can just kill you basically and you will have no mobility no actual speed you may use crouching for some mind games at some loops but it's like one out of 20 and yeah her movement speed is terrible her uh like dash is terrible too it's very useful in chases maybe against some very very small loops but I'm not sure. And uh, you'll have a sound, some sound effect, like the animal roar before she goes to the dash. So it gives your opponent some time to prepare. Her dash is short and you can only dash when crouching and her crouching is bad since it's too slow. So basically her stealth is very bad you don't even need to use it, basically. Her dash attack is pretty damn bad too. You barely can use it, so she's just an M1 killer because her dash is bad. You're better off without it. Her crouching is bad. She doesn't have any mobility, anything else. I'd say her, uh, her chase power is like 2 out of 10. It can get useful in very very rare occasions and her stealth is it could be good if it wasn't at 92 percent so uh what else she does have a bear trap which you know can slow down the game so people have to go through the jigsaw boxes to take the trap off because if they want they can die but it's very RNG dependent and uh pig needs a lot of time like because she's slow and 
it's hard to end chases with her against like above average survivors uh, her bear traps are rng dependent uh, people can get the trap off from the first box or from the fourth box it actually depends if from the fourth box her slowdown power is actually like seven out of ten or six out of ten it's pretty good if they get it on the first try it's it's terrible it may save you like 10 or 12 15 seconds so that's it no map control stealth is bad her uh, chase power is useless basically and her bear traps can be pretty good like above average but not great or can be very bad if we assume that her that the rng is not in our favor she's just an m1 killer basically and uh if rng is good she's just an m1 killer that can slow the game down a little bit uh but that's it so she's definitely at the bottom of the d tier she needs a buff i do believe that uh that the a good buff will be uh reducing a little bit over time for the better trap to activate to work uh maybe add a second or even two seconds for her dash ability or maybe uh when she crouches make her seize the aura of survivors from like four meters like some small amandas add-on like integration but uh right now she's like pretty weak against some competition and uh on the top of the d tier list for me is the trapper well before the pdb he was like maybe the weakest killer in my opinion because one trap without add-ons is pretty bad iridescent add-ons are not very good and uh the traps you know he's rng based like four five or six traps on the map you have to set them up you lose a lot of time and you do not have any other power except the traps except for the traps so uh he just lacks everything it's not enough traps a little bit rng based uh takes a lot of time to trap something uh no actual mobility map control no slowing down the game you know it's just not very good uh after the pdb he got one more trap and his rng traps gotta be better he got some good add-ons especially the purple ones that can make him go up a tier i definitely see that but uh he's just not good still he has some flaws he can be looped he needs a lot of time for the traps and without some of the add-ons uh, with some other add-ons he's not that great of a killer he doesn't have uh anything else to capitalize on and i believe he's a d tier so uh, let me take a sip of water and we'll move on to the c tier because that's it for the d tier in my opinion coming with the c tier we'll start with the ghost face Ghostface is kind of similar to Michael Myers. He stalks people, he gets his power, and he can down people. But he doesn't have that stupid tier one. I mean, tier one is a good idea, but not the way it is on Michael right now. So he can just go ahead and stalk people, get his power, and insta down them. He can crouch which is good i feel like he's less detectable than michael and he's talking 
like in terms of range, in terms of field of view, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is better. So we have a Michael that can get the power more quickly. Is a little bit harder to detect, but not by much. And uh, basically, his stalking mechanics is easier and a bit better. So, uh, at least he starts as an M1 killer already, where Michael needs some time to get there. So, basically, just a little, little bit better version of Michael Myers. And uh, he's in the bottom of C tier for me. Next up is the clown. Well, some people think he's a D tier, some people think he's a bit up. So uh, I feel like he's a C tier because experienced clowns, well, he doesn't have any map pressure, any other abilities except for his bottles. The bottle with the antidote is barely usable. You can use it in some instances, but it's barely usable. The other bottle, which gives you some visual distractions and slows you down a little bit. I mean, it's pretty good. You, as a survivor, you can avoid it pretty easily. And uh, as a clown, it's not that easy to land a good shot with the bottle. But uh, they can help you with some loops. And uh, sometimes on some loops or against average or below average survivors, these bottles can help you up a lot. And uh, at least, at least, like Clown's chase power is actually a bit better than Trickster's, definitely. And he has a uh, 150 movement speed, which is very good. So yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, he lacks in some like tracking, maybe some stealth stuff, some mobility, map control, etc., etc. But at least his chase power is like average, but uh not really that bad and he can get something out of chase and chase is that one aspect of the game that you gotta be good at because chase takes most of your time and your goal is to hook a survivor that is that simple and his chase power is like mediocre but it's not bad and can help you in one of the uh, most if not the most important aspect of the game so he's a c tier for me now let's talk about the wraith this guy received a little bit of a nerf his uh speed boost uh got reduced by uh 0 0.25 seconds mm, i feel like it's not a not a big deal his add-ons got a little bit reworked but uh Wraith is actually, uh, I mean, it's not a bad killer. Uh, most of the people see Wraith as a, uh, like, invisible guy. That, uh, before he gets visible and can hit people, he just ring through the bell. And, uh, then he's an M1 killer, and that's it. But, uh, it's a bit more than that. First, uh... He moves at 150 something percent speed when he's invincible and it's pretty damn fast. So uh, he can control the map. He can get through the map fairly easy, fairly quick because that's a good speed. He has no terror radius or red stain. You can see him a little bit but like it's not that easy. And uh, Spine Chill, etc. It kills him for sure. But uh, at least he's pretty mobile when uh, he traverses the map. 
when he is invincible. And uh, let's not forget that he can body block the pallets or some entrances, which is good. And uh, he still gets a one second speed boost when he gets out of his invincibility. So uh, let's say it's a wall, you go to the right and you're trying to uncloak from the invisibility. Then you go to the left right before unlocking. So you fake the uh, side. Then you get a little speed boost and you can bam, hit a survivor. Plus, he can get some easy first hits. Like sometimes almost a guarantee first hit if he block a pallet or catch survivor off guard. So we have an M1 killer that can get an easy first hit, which is pretty fast uh, when he's invincible. So he does have some mobility and some map control a little bit. He can mind game and mind game is like this opportunity is good one. But at the end of the day, his uh, map control is not great at all. It's, I'd say it's uh, a little bit above average, but it's not great. Uh, and it's hard uh, to down people anyway. Like you can get some mind games, can get an easy hit. But still, you are very loopable and you're an M1 killer. But with some tweaks. I'd say that uh, with the right add-ons, it can be like a bottom B tier. And against the new players, he can be very strong because they don't know what to do when he's coming. They don't see him coming, etc., etc. But on um, most occasions, and if we're taking into the consideration the criteria for our tier list, I believe he's a, he's a C. Next one is a uh, Hillbilly. Hillbilly has a good insta-down potential with his chainsaw, but uh, they nerf him to the ground, basically. He used to be one of the strongest killers, but uh, that uh, cooldown mechanics like basically killed him. Uh, he had some mobility uh, and map control where he could just launch his chainsaw and travel the map at pretty high speed but uh not anymore with the cooldown mechanic he can do it a little bit but not like before uh he gets stunned when uh he lands his chainsaw in some walls rocks etc etc and like his chance was pretty easy to avoid and it's pretty hard for new people or for casual people to master it's pretty hard for some people to land his chainsaw and uh, it's like he can break pallets fairly quick but uh his chainsaw is not that huge of a weapon so he does have some problems using it I'll put him in a C tier because his chainsaw is hard to master and when you do master it, it's still not very hard to avoid. The cooldown mechanic is pretty bad and his the mobility and map control is not as it used to be. Next up is Freddy. I'll put him at the top of my C tier and that will be it for the C tier. Uh, I believe that uh, even though people start in the uh, dream state uh, 60 seconds after the game starts, it doesn't do anything crazy. It seems like everything is slowed down. You have that uh, black and white screen, but it's not that huge of a difference whether you're sleeping or not. You still gonna get the gems done, still gonna get the job done, etc. etc. He does have some some kind of stealth 
before you're in uh, like get into the dream state it's hard to see Freddy so that's cool but uh it's not that huge of a deal he does have some anti-loop stuff he has some dream palace he has some dream snares dream palettes are barely usable you know, like it's barely usable and uh you don't really need them most of the time uh dream snares are a bit better so people step on them they they get a little bit slowed down but the number of snares is not that big and uh the time it takes for you to put some snares uh it's it still takes some time he can uh like he has some anti-loop mechanic that only works good on some small loops or against average or below average survivors and the effect from the snare that slow down etc etc is pretty short and not very strong but he can teleport to the generators and uh that's that's a cool thing to have uh with some tinker or discordance he can control gens pretty good with that ability but the problem is that the cooldown for his ability is too damn big it's a really big cooldown if two people are working on gens for example only two people you get the tinker for one of the gens you teleport to it try to chase someone and the other generator just gets done so uh not to make this video like three or four hours long uh let me say that uh his anti-loop mechanic with the dream snare is not great it's like mediocre or it's just yeah it's just average and uh, it doesn't help you a lot uh plus the number of dream snares is not huge his uh teleport into gens is good but the cooldown is ridiculously big his uh dream world is like the effects that you get in a dream world is like the effects are not that strong and uh you don't really slow the game down and uh he's like stealth ability i mean it's cool but only as some like just the beginner players actually so when 85 percent of the cases it won't help you so yeah the cooldown big snares are mediocre and the number of snares is pretty low pallets are basically useless uh his uh dream state is not that great and you know you have that uh alarm clocks on the map a lot of people can just go take three seconds off and they are not sleeping anymore and the rng is pretty bad these alarms clock are nearby gens so it's easy for people to use them fairly quick so it's not a big deal and one more reason is that his add-ons are pretty bad like his red and purple add-ons are pretty bad and uh basically 60 70 percent of his add-ons are bad and since we're taking all of the add-ons etc etc in consideration and all these other minuses he does have some cool powers but they are not very good and his add-ons are pretty bad his passive ability is not doing much i have to put him at the top of the c tier but uh i cannot put him in a b tier i'll put doctor in a b tier though uh doc is a is a very good tracker he gets uh like a static blast people scream get their madness a bit up 
and uh, you know where they are when they scream, they, they reveal their location, so Doctor is at least a good tracker, which is really good. Uh, his uh, spark, when you shock people, you can shock them through windows, through pallets, through anything, and they'll get their madness up. They'll start to see some halluculations. They'll start to see some visual stuff. They'll start to see some like harder skill checks. And uh, that's really good. And uh, in terms of uh, his spark, like when they get to the tier three, in terms of madness, like the more you spark them, the more madness they get. When they get to the tier three, they cannot do anything. And I'll have to actually sit for uh, like a good 8-10 seconds and uh, snap out of their madness. So uh, when they get their madness to tier 3, you actually slow the game down a little bit, as Manto says. So uh, that's actually good. So he can slow the game down a little bit. He can track people. And he negates stealth. And uh, stealth is not the meta. But uh, Iron Will is still a good perk, which uh, is used by a lot of people. And uh, let's talk about his spark a little more. If you time it correctly, you can actually shock people. They'll have a little, little cooldown. And they cannot drop pallets or vault windows. And uh, if you place your shock correctly... You can end most chases, like at least 50% of the chases, 50% of the loops are are good. It's kind of tricky to end some chases uh, in some loops. Uh, and his spark is not that hard to dodge, but uh, it's, it's like pretty good chase power to have still. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. And uh, to summarize, a good tracker negates stealth. His spark is pretty good in chases. I'll have to put Doctor in the B tier. His spark is like dodgeable. Okay. Uh, stealth is not the meta, even though he con like counters uh, Iron Will, which is really good. He's a really good tracker. He slows the game down a little bit with the Madness Tier 3. And his add-ons are alright. You can get a variety of different shock beams. Uh, you can get a variety of calculations and all of that. So uh, it's, it's pretty good. I'll put him at the bottom of the B tier. At least in my eyes. Next up is Cenobite. This guy is kind of tricky with his red and purple add-ons. With red being overpowered and probably be fixed, I'm pretty sure. He's a beast. He's definitely an A tier. Oh, with some other add-ons, he can be a pretty average. Oh, he does have a pretty good chase power even though it's not great. And uh, he has that cube, which like at least one person on the team, if it's like a, a group, if uh, he's, he's like more powerful against solo survivors. But if it's a group, at least one person has to find the cube to prevent his chain hunt. To prevent his chains from grabbing you, etc., etc. I'd say his chase power is just a little, little bit, like maybe 0 0.5 better than the Doctor. Actually, but he has the cube. Without it, he's not that great, but he still has some map control. With his power, his chase power is pretty good. He can slow the game down. But uh, his add-ons probably gonna be nerfed a bit. He still suffers on some chases, and he suffers against 
some good coordinated teams. But I'll put him in a B tier, and I think he's pretty solid and can jump from tier to tier, actually. So that's that's what I think about him. That's what I feel like. Next one is the Nemesis. This guy is a beast when he has his power up and his tentacle in a tier 3. It's kind of tricky and the hitbox is a little bit tricky, but uh, it's very hard to dodge him when he gets like his power fully up. It, he's very hard to dodge. That's that's some facts. And uh, not only that, uh, he has some zombies that can get people off the gens. Sometimes can just be annoying or even help in chases. Uh, but uh, his disadvantages are pretty huge. In the beginning, he's very loopable. And... Uh, he does need a considerable amount of time to gain his powers before he becomes a pretty good chaser. Zombies are very RNG based and most of the time they are useless. But you still have the killer that can be a bit annoying with the zombies. Can take some time for people to find the cure. And his chase power when he gets his power up is very good. It's not great, but it's very good. And uh, the problem I have with him is that zombies are too RNG based and most of the time they're not good. And he needs too much time to get his power back to the uh, to that huge tentacle. But it all depends on the survivors and the map still. But he needs some time and he needs some RNG his power but i think i'll put him in a b tier good chaser can slow the game a little bit and zombies can do some things sometimes next up i'll put a death slinger well he was like a top of the b tier for me actually but uh with that pdb it changed I'm not going to say I played a lot of the Death Slinger. Uh, is far, far better than the uh, Trickster and the Clown still. His 1v1, his chase power was actually 8 or even 8.5 out of 10 before the nerf. He was very hard to dodge because uh, he can instantly shoot you. It's not the case anymore. Uh... The problem that he had is his map control and his mobility. He's 110% speed. Uh, he's pretty slow. And when you land a shot, you'll have to wait some time before you get people close to you with the chain in his rifle. And uh, yeah, he's, he, can, he could end chases pretty fast. Uh, it's not very hard to shoot people but uh, with, with the death slinger but uh, you still have to wait some time uh, for the chain to get a person next to you um, also the, uh, the chain you can break the chain if you have an object between it for example a pallet or your teammate and when the chain breaks he gets stunned big time and you gain a lot of the distance his uh, rifle range is not that long so you cannot control the areas of the map or get some crazy shots like the huntress his range is not really good you have to wait for his chain his movement speed is not that great so they nerfed his uh, ability to shoot instantly they reduced the stun time if they break the chain which is a little little boost but uh it's just too small of a boost and uh he's actually uh 
is actually in a B tier still for me. He still is good. Like he's still good um, at 1v1. Maybe not like 8, 8.5. Maybe like he's like more of a 7, 7.5. He's still slow. They got his terror radius up, which is a shame for me. I think this is absolutely ridiculous and not needed. But still, his 1v1 potential is really good. Like, really, really good. He has his slow, no mobility, no map control because the range is short. But his chase potential is still very high. He can get downs fairly quick, even though you have to wait. And right now, his stun is a little bit less. So, you'll get less distance. But uh, I'll give him a B tier. Maybe uh, his, his add-ons got reworked. And uh, his add-ons are... Most of them are usable and pretty good. And, uh, maybe he should have been in a bottom B tier. But I think he's good as of he is right now. And uh, maybe some PDB testing will prove me wrong that he's weaker. Or maybe he's good at that place. We'll see. But I think he's a, like a middle B tier for me. Next up is Cannibal, the booba. This guy is ridiculous. This guy has a built-in inst down. And uh, it's a lot easier to land some shots with him than with, uh, with the Billy. His chainsaw is more maneuverable, more useful in most of the loops. And uh, not only that, it's uh, more useful, uh, it's easier to use, and uh, you definitely need a lot of practice to use it on the top-notch level. And if used on a top-notch level, you can end chases pretty quick with his chainsaw. You can destroy some of the loops fairly quick and insta down people fairly quick. Uh, so his power is a bit better than Billy's. He may not have the same mobility, even though I don't think it's like that well, like worse than the Billy's and uh, He's a very good defender. He can defend totems. He can defend hooked people. And his built-in chain, uh, like chainsaw counters a lot of uh, meta. He counters borrowed time, for example. So uh, Booba may be a little bit less in mobility. He's better in chases than Billy. And he's a very good defender, arguably top two defender top three defender in the game arguably the best defender in the game uh he's a very very good defender so i'll put him at the uh, basically top of the b tier in my eyes next up is the twins uh well on some maps they can be crucial uh for success but uh ultimately I do feel like the add-ons are good, but not great. Even the uh, red and purple add-ons are good, but not great. And uh, they're a bit map dependent and they they faced a lot of the nerves. Uh, they're still good at loops. It's hard to dodge Victor. It's hard to see Victor. You can get a hit with Charlotte, then switch to Victor. You can uh, get a hit with Victor, then come back as a Charlotte. You can shut down Killer Shack with Charlotte, like the entrance or the window, then prolong with Victor since he can jump through the palace, etc. etc. So her chase potential is actually. It's actually 7 out of 10, I guess. Her tactical stuff. Uh, is huge 
for potential to uh, get some crazy plays going to body block some corridors so for example on silent hill map uh, to body block some loops is amazing her potential to be in two places on the map and have the map control is amazing if played right victor is very hard to do uh, to dodge sometimes and he can also jump through the pallets which makes looping victor like not that easy even for an experienced survivors that play at a high level i'm not sure that the twins are an a tier yet since the uh they do have some weaknesses uh still the cooldown before you can switch to charlotte is pretty huge the cooldown on victor is not short and uh also uh it's just sometimes it's very hard to control the game with the twins they do suffer in some of the maps some of the cooldowns the uh meters in which they need to stand uh i mean they were it, it was nerfed you you cannot stand right in front of someone as a charlotte or a victor so they've been nerfed in terms of camping and tunneling a bit which was their best strength and uh they just have a good mobility, good map control, good chase. Actually, very good chase and a huge tactical stuff. But uh, they still suffer. Sometimes they uh, still suffer from the cooldowns, from these meters in which you can switch. And I feel like this killer will suffer the most, plus the Oni and hack these three killers will suffer the most from the boom totems but i do believe on like 30 or 40 percent of the occasions twins can be a bottom eight here but uh on like 60 percent of of the time so on most occasions they're like a top b tier a very solid killer with a lot of strength but can be exploited badly for some of their weaknesses and that's it for the b tier moving on to the a tier i may have a controversial pick here but at the bottom of the a tier i'll put a demo gorgon let's talk about the demo here a little bit so uh first things first he's a killer that has a little bit of stealth when he's coming out of portals uh he can be a bit noisy but no terror radius still and that stealth can cut some distance before getting your first hit he can place portals and traverse through the portals at a reasonably high speed not great but it's still a lot faster than most of the killers so his uh, mobility is pretty good it's like 7 out of 10 he does have a little bit of stealth which may help at times he has a huge tactic potential you can trap exit gates and when there is one survival left he will never get out if you close the hatch you can put two portals on an interesting place for example on a generator that is in a very good spot you can place two portals survivors they close one portal you come out from the other portal which is very good so uh his portals when uh, survivors try to close his portals they suffer from the oblivious effect they don't hear your terror radius and uh, that means that you can sneak up on them plus they waste time to seal portals and if they are placed very good you need to seal them so 
he wastes the survivor's time. When he presses his ability, the portals can activate the killer instinct. And you will know that this there are survivors nearby. You can teleport or you will at least know that something is going on. So he has a little bit of stealth. He has a little bit of tracking ability. It's very weak, but it still can be useful. He can sometimes slow the game down when somebody is sealing their portals and uh, the Demogorgon portals. And uh, if they're sealing the portal, still... If you do not press your killer like ability, uh, your killer instinct won't trigger. But when they seal a portal, you will know it and you'll still get like a grasp of where the survivor is. His mobility is above average. He's pretty fast when traversing the portals. You can place them basically anywhere. Six portals, like, uh, in his base kit are more than enough. And, uh, his, uh, like, cooldown for traveling between portals is actually 10 seconds. So only 10 seconds is, it's a pretty fast cooldown. He's a very good defender. Uh, the possibilities are limitless. You can defend totems. You can trap exit gates, trap gents in the middle, like a triangle. You can travel fairly easy. You'll have a little bit of stealth, so you can place a portal behind the rock and sneak up on a survivor. Has a little bit of tracking, so you know what's going on, where the survivors are. He's very good with the totem builds, even though it may suffer with the boon totems, but he's very good with most of the perks in the game. He can use a variety of perks. He can run a variety of different tactics and perks. So uh, that alone can make him uh, like a bottom B tier. But uh, he's a bit more than that, and that's my point. He has this shred ability. Uh, which is which is a pretty good chase tool. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's not great, but it's definitely not bad. And uh, in the worst case scenario, you're an M1 killer, which can shred through the pallets fairly quick. So at least you have something for the chase. But uh, you can shred... Uh, through the survivor, if he has a little bit of distance up through the window, you can get him. Uh, you can get him from the from above. For example, you can jump from the building. You'll actually get more shred distance. Uh, you can hit some edges of a hitbox and get some hits that uh, seem to be non-possible but uh, they are possible if you're good with the hitbox you can get some ambitious things going on and uh, not only that there are two types of his shred one when you hold it a little and you can shred right away and a lone shred which covers more distance which you can cover the whole killer shack for example <clears throat> and uh, the thing is that you can fake a shred, get your power, get your shred. The guy can dead hard or start running in circles, left, right. And you just, you know, press the uh, M1 and just hit it with your arm. So uh, the mind game possibilities are very 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 uh like he's very very capable of uh mind gaming people with uh shred fake at least or with the short shred long shred doesn't matter uh he does have some weaknesses uh he does have some uh good add-ons which will give you a variety of different tactic to run 
is red add-ons, especially one of them is very strong. His common add-ons, yellow and brown ones, are really, really strong. And uh, if a person knows how to push this killer to the max, I believe he's a low A tier, very, very high mid tier at best. It's something like, it's hard to rate Demo and Twins properly. Uh, I mean, you can swap Demo with Twins or Twins with Demo sometimes. I do believe that in my criteria, the uh, Demos is a bit more consistent. Uh, and then 50, 60% of the time can get you the kills in terms of the criteria. Whereas the twins can give you like 40% of the time. But it's debatable. But if you learn how to use all of his powers, the stealth, the tracking, good portal placement, uh, traversing when needed, when it's crucial, shred is very tricky, the edges of the hitbox, uh, windows, uh, the faking of the shred, long shred, short shred, etc., etc. Plus, people need time to seal your portals, and there's also an add-on for that. Variety of different play styles, good add-ons, a lot of good things. If you do push his potential to the max, he is very good. Uh, but it takes a lot of time to master the demo. He's also capable of putting on a fight on any given map. So he's, he has a huge mobility, good defense capabilities, good map pressure, pretty good chase power, a little bit of stealth, a little bit of tracking. If you learn how to use all of this, he's actually very strong. Next one on the list is Oni. I, I feel like with the boom perks, Oni might be a little bit uh, weaker, but uh, I'm not sure. I, I still feel like Oni, like this killer can be B tier, even bottom B tier can be high B tier, can be bottom A tier, can be even high A tier. He's very dependent on the survivors. His power, when his speed is very high and he has that insta down, his power is very good. Like top two, top three power in the game. And that's hardly debatable. But uh, to get his power, he needs one hit and a little bit of time. That's not a big deal in most scenarios. Uh, but sometimes people can loop him for one, two, three minutes. Or he can get looped for one minute, then switches to another person. Another person loops him for one minute. And that's boom, three gens down, for example. But uh, his power is one of the strongest, if not the strongest in the game. When he's in his power, he's a beast. He doesn't get stunned as Billy when approaching the walls. His speed is very good, which gives him a map pressure, a map control, a good mobility. And he has a crazy insta down. You can just insta down, you're very mobile. He's fucking crazy. That's that's what I call him. He's a beast. Uh, his power is so strong. And the only disadvantage is that uh, you just need time and you're very survival dependent. And uh, the thing is that on some maps with tight corridors or with dense pallet placements, he can suffer. So he's a little bit map dependent, but just a little bit. And he's very survival dependent, uh, very, very survival dependent. Takes some time getting used to. But... Uh, most of the time you'll get his power up in like a minute or a minute and a half. So uh, his power is just too strong. Uh, his snowball potential is insane. You cannot underestimate him. 
even though I feel like he's not very consistent, but he's he's just too good when he got his power up. So I think I'll have to put him in the uh, A tier as well. Next up is the Huntress. For me, Huntress is definitely an A tier. But she takes a lot of practice. A lot of practice. If we compare her to the Death Slinger, so uh, Anna is, is just better because her hatchets have a, they have a pretty big hitbox. You can throw hatchets through some small cracks in the walls, for example, through some obstacles. The hitbox is huge. You do not waste your time uh, waiting for the chain, for example, as a death slinger. So uh, they'll be more reliable. And a little bit faster, but a bit harder getting used to than the Death Slinger. Uh, they have a crazy range. You can throw a hatchet from one point of the map to the other point of the map and hit a guy or a girl. So uh, the range is ridiculous. Uh, with the Huntress and with the practice, you can get just a crazy shots like like real crazy shots from all across the map and these crazy shots are nothing uh nothing similar to the death linger or tricks or etc the range is insane the hitbox is huge the possibilities are very very big and uh not only that her terror radius is a bit, a bit higher with her lullaby, which is, I think, which is good. It gives some unexperienced people some warning that she is near. It uh, gives you, a, it, it gives her a bit more pressure, but uh, with the possibility of the hatchets, with their hitbox, with their range. And the other other things it gives you it gives her like it's basically a death slinger with a better map control and a better chase tool so i have to put her in the a tier but she's a very hard killer to master i remember watching coconut uh that guy is a beast with the huntress give him a shot So yeah, that's it. Next up, I think is the Pyramid Head. This guy is a beast. Uh, he can counter basically 90-95% of the loop. Uh, of the loops in the game. Uh just joking i mean he, he can counter all of the loops in the game if played properly uh he counters most of the meta the borrow time decisive strike etc he cannot use the uh barbecue and chili for example because when he uses his cages uh it's not the hooks it's not counted as hooks but uh survivor perks are far more uh, diverse and they are better so uh pyramid head is definitely like he counters the meta he counters a lot of survivors perks he can counter any loop in the game he has a normal movement speed he has that torment which helps you in loops once again uh, gives you some killer instinct, etc., etc. He's also uh, capable of mooring people. If they had two hooks, you can just kill them and you save a lot of the time. 
if people step on your rise of judgment, you can just send them to cages instead of hooks and you can counter the perks. And you can save from 5, 7 seconds to 15 seconds, getting the guy to the hook. He has a normal speed, he can counter basically all of the loops in the game. He counters a lot of the survivor's perks and he saves time when he gets people through the cages. He's a bit hard to master and his rare add-ons are pretty bad, but he's a beast without them. Uh, he's very strong, very strong killer with uh, basically no weaknesses. He does need some mobility and his power uh, can be dodged by uh, an experienced survivors, but it's still hard. Uh, pretty hard to dodge his power for most of the people. So yeah, I I I have to put a pyramid head basically on top of the A tier. Next up is the plague. Plague is a she was somewhere in in between B and A tier, but uh, in PDB he got a huge buff. I mean, she got a huge buff. Uh, she's basically far more reliable. It's easy to puke on people. The duration of her puke got buffed. It got a, a longer. She has some RNG stuff in terms of her fountains. If they're not placed very good. Uh, she may have a, a little bit of a problem. But... Uh, she basically has a map pressure. Uh, she slows the game down very good. Uh, the puke survivors. Uh, she negates stealth. Uh, because the survivors are puking and making noises, etc, etc. She also negates healing, basically. Because puke down survivors, they cannot heal. And it negates boom totems, it negates med kits, and med kits are way, way more powerful than toolbox or flashlight. So she slows the game down, negates stealth, negates healing. She can control the map by puking on generators and some other things that survivors touch, and they'll still get sick. And if somebody drinks from the fountain and somebody will do it because they need to uh, or they will be like an inst down she becomes not a huntress on steroids because the range is not that big but she can vomit with her red thing and she's basically a ranged killer so uh, we have a killer that uh negates stealth that uh, slows the game down makes life a lot harder for uh, survivors that has a pretty good map control wow she can puke on things etc etc and uh, when somebody drinks from the fountain she becomes a ranged killer and it's not that hard to puke on somebody with her and when she has that red puke, it's very hard to loop her. I'd say she'd be like, I'd give a Huntress a 9 out of 10 in terms of chase power. I'll give her like 8 out of 10 uh, in terms of chase power with the red puke. But she does negate stealth, have a map control, and negates healing, which is a very powerful thing in the game. So... As a patch 5.3.0, I'll, I'll put it at the top 8. And uh, the last killer that I want to put here is actually the Hag. I do believe she's a top tier killer. She's a top A tier killer. But I'm not sure that she is the uh, bottom S killer for some reasons. Her map control with her traps is insane. It's it's insane. 
You can't say none about it. Nothing bad about it. She has she's a 110% killer, which is nothing because her power makes up for it. She can shut down any loop in the game. Her map control is probably top two in the game. And uh, we have a killer with a chase power of uh, basically like 7 out of 10, 7.5 out of 10. I'll give it something like this. Uh, her map control is top notch, basically top two in the game. It's definitely it. And uh, that's, n that's not it. Uh, she can... Uh, control the game and and she has a lot of tactical things going on for her uh the gameplay possibilities for her the way that she can play the way how she can be played the perks she can run with and the number of pretty decent add-ons makes her a very hard killer that can basically that won't leave you alone they can shut that, like she's a great chaser and uh her map control is ridiculously good and her technical possibilities are huge she's very hard to play against but i'm not sure she's a nest here uh first of all the she will suffer from the boom totems Second of all, she can suffer from the coordinated teams that know how to counter her. So at high MMR, she will give more difficulties than the three killers that are in the S tier. But she's incredibly, incredibly strong. Oh. S tier. You already know. I'll put Spirit here. Uh, her nerf is not a huge deal. We don't have a visual cue. And uh, basically, all that the people will uh, get from the Spirit is no free mind game trick where you just stand and do nothing and people think they're that you're doing something uh she like her most powerful add-on still working she got some new add-ons which adds to her game uh, which uh can give you uh, can give her some unpredictable things some build varieties etc etc i'll say I'll give her a second spot in the tier list. After the nerf, she's a third spot. Maybe you can switch her with the hag in terms of some maps, but I feel like she's just a little bit more consistent still. And that nerf is not a, that big of a deal. And she won't suffer from the boom totems. She won't suffer from any map. She's good at any map, basically. And it's she's still hard to dodge. She's still very mobile. Her map control pressure game is very strong. And uh, overall, I feel like that nerf in 1.3.0 is basically not that hard. You just know when she's in her power, that's basically it. If we cut a long story short. Then we have the Blight. The ping pong guy is she is like this guy is crazy fast. He's crazy fast and uh his power gives him a huge mobility, very huge mobility. With the right add-ons, he becomes so strong that it's barely impossible to do something against him. And uh he does have a map pressure. He does have one of the best mobility in the game. And his power is very useful in chases as well. 
He's not the best chaser, but he's far above average. His mobility is arguably top four, top five. His map pressure is arguably top five as well. He can be very unpredictable and hard for survivors to dodge. He's very, uh, very tricky killer that can leap and jump from the surfaces. Uh, his add-ons are really good. He's very consistent if played correctly, but he's a hard guy to master. But I have to put him in a C tier because he is just a, a top guy in all of the uh, most important categories in the game. And uh, I think it's pretty undebatable. Nurse. Uh, she's a monster. She's just so good in everything. Uh, her iridescent got better, even better in 1.30, uh, 1, uh, 5.3.0. And uh, she's just a crazy good killer, which denies all of the loops. Like her chase power is 10 out of 10. And uh, she does have some mobility with her power. She's not the most mobile, but she does have some mobility. She does have some map pressure. She can go through walls and it can save a lot of time. And uh, on some maps, her ability to go through walls is is ridiculously good it's too good and uh her chase power you cannot counter that you you cannot dodge a very good nurse like all you have to do is gen rush i think that's it like a, the nurse is undisputably at first place because her chase power is 10 out of 10 her mobility is pretty good on some maps is insane she has a map pressure She's basically the only one killer that can just ignore any loop in the game, but she's very hard to master and probably a bit like a bit low S tier on console, I guess. But overall, I'll put her at the top of the list. Here's what I got. Thank you for your attention. See you. And let me feel, let me know in the comments what you guys think.